Okay, here we are again. Let's talk about the derivation of the brachistochrone cyclone. Okay, this is part one. And uh, last time we were talking, we talked about the brachistochrone and the hypocycloid. And what I want to do this time is show you how to derive those equations for that. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to show you how simple they are and how they require high school math. Now, you do use calculus in this, but what I want to show you is that calculus is algebra, trigonometry, and geometry with a little bit of new stuff called calculus. Okay, so if you don't know algebra, trigonometry, and geometry, you can't do calculus because that's what calculus is. Okay, algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. So you got to know those three to get calculus done. So if you take, let's say you took a mixing bowl and you put in algebra, geometry, and trigonometry and a little new stuff called calculus and you mix them all together, you would have calculus. You pour it out into a pan and you'd have calculus. And that's what calculus is. Those three plus a little, plus a little new, new stuff. Okay, let's go on and see how we do this. Okay. To, to create this cycloid, what we're going to do is we have a wheel here. And I got it radius of 5, but it could be any radius. I just made it large. And so we're going to roll this wheel to the right without slipping. And we have a, at 0, we start with point P. And what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to roll the wheel to the right. And we're not going to let the wheel slip. We're just going to roll it. It's just like you'd have a car wheel or t car tire. And, and you take the wheel off your car and you roll it. If you if you mark a point where it touches the ground with a piece of chalk and you roll the wheel, you'll see the chalk roll around the wheel. Okay, and that's all we're doing. We're, we mark point P with a piece of chalk. And we're going to roll the wheel until a point P comes back to the ground again, okay? That's what we're going to do. Okay, so what I have here is, uh, is a wheel with a point P on it, or a well, point A here. And uh, I want to see, I want to show you how we're talking about tracking this, okay? So let's uh, let this wheel go, and let's look at point A as it moves. So as the wheel moves to the right, point A moves along the wheel until it gets back down to 2 pi, down to 0, down to the ground again, and it comes back to 0. Okay, and what we want to do is derive some equations in X and Y to track that point. Okay, we want to be able to track it because the point moving does us no good if we can't track it or tell where it is. So that's what we want to do, okay? Okay, so we have this point P, and we have it located from zero. We have zero in the y direction of point P is y, and we have from zero to point P, we call x, okay? And then we locate x in terms of the center of this circle, okay? So uh, let's... Write some equations to track this point P. The reason for showing you all of this is to uh, demonstrate to you how all of this mathematics is related. The mathematics you learn in high school is essential for learn solving this problem. And every good thing you enjoy today, from a cell phone to an automobile, involves mathematics. If there was no one studying mathematics, none of these things would exist. Okay, so let's look at this. We have this point P, and we know where it's located via X and Y on the, on the coordinate plane. Okay, so let's find X. Once the circle starts moving, we know that the circumference of a full circle is equal to 2 pi times R, okay, for a full circle, because we learned that in ninth grade geometry. If the point only moves a small part of a full circle, then we know that C is equal to theta times R where theta is in radians, and theta is equal to 2 pi, okay? 
So C is equal to 2 pi times R equals R times theta. Theta is equal to 2 pi. 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, we divide by 2, we get divide both sides of this equation by 2, we get 360 degrees divided by 2 equals 180. Then we divide both sides of this equation by pi, we get 1 is equal to 180 degrees divided by pi. Now we have a ratio of degrees and pi. That's why I say that it must be in radians. Now we have a ratio of degrees on the top and pi is on the bottom. So we call that radians, okay? So if we roll only a small amount of degrees, the circumference is S. And that's equal to S equal 2 pi times R equals R times theta, as we said before. Let's say theta is equal to 30 degrees. Then S equals R times theta equals R times 30 degrees. And to convert that degrees to radians, we've got to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Because we know 180 degrees divided by pi is equal to 1. Therefore, pi over 180 is equal to 1 also. Therefore, S equals R pi over 6. R times pi over 6. Okay, that's just an example. So let's see. Uh, that's just an example using theta equal 30 degrees. We want to determine S for any movement B to P. Any movement from point P to B, we want to know that distance right there. We started at zero, and we moved at some distance, point B. Now we want to know how far has P moved, okay, along that arc. Okay, we see that the distance from zero to the center of the circle is OB. From here, zero to B is OB. OB, we know, is equal to R times the degrees theta because that's the distance P has moved since it left O, zero, okay? So OB equals, equals S equal R times theta for this movement distance. We also know how to find the legs of, a shown tri of the shown triangle, this triangle here. We know that from ninth grade, tenth grade trigonometry, okay? So we know sine theta is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. And we know cosine theta is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. Therefore, the hypotenuse is R. So we know the opposite leg equals R times sine theta. And the adjacent leg is equal to R times cosine theta. Where sines and cosines are just ratios. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So now we see that, um, so to find X and Y, we just subtract the distances. Okay. We have OB from zero to point B, where it's moved to. And we subtract X from it, which we don't know what X is. Okay. And that's equal to, when we subtract X from OB, we get the bottom leg, the base of this triangle, is R sine theta. We do know what that is, okay. So then, OB equals S, or OB is equal to S equals R times theta, so we plug that in, and we have R times theta minus X is equal to R sine theta. We move R sine theta to the right side, move X to the left side, Move x to the right side and r sine theta to the left side, and we have x equal r times theta minus r sine theta. We factor out r, and we get r times the quantity theta minus sine theta. This is where your algebra comes in. We haven't done any calculus yet, okay? We always done the geometry and algebra. This is a calculus problem, but all we're doing is geometry and algebra. And including that algebra is numbers. Okay. Now to get y, we say, well, 
y is equal to the radius minus r cosine theta. And we solve for y. Now we have the point P in terms of x and y. Now point P can be tracked from the zero point, starting point. Let's see the movement. Okay, so here we have our Bakista cone again. Our wheel starting at point zero, where we call it A now, instead of point P. And let's go. Watch it track. We track it. And all we've done is uh, we've just put these location points in there, X and Y. As you can see, the Y up here. Okay. Y is equal to 1 because it's at the radius. is moving along the uh, center of the wheel. The center of the wheel doesn't move. It's the X part that moves. So as you can see, the circle is moving with the uh, point relationship to X and Y. And that's the brachista cone. Moving between 0 and 2 pi. And that's all you need to do to derive that. Okay? Now comes the calculus. And that, that will be in part two. Okay, the next part is part two. And we're going to do the derivation of the arc length of the cycloid. The one we just did, we're going to derive the length of it, how long it is. And uh, that's where the calculus comes in. It's not much calculus, but uh, it's a little. And you'll see how easy it is. The majority of the derivation of the arc length involves trigonometry and algebra and a little geometry you have to know but it's uh, trigonometry and, and geometry uh, trigonometry and algebra so uh, until next time I hope you learned something